all right the second lab that we are going to do we are going to simply use the data that we have created in our first part of the lab we are going to use the cholesterol enhanced 15 part 1 data set um, just as a recap this is a data set with more than 1200 observation and 33 variables some of those variables are numeric and some of those variables are character variables um, some of them are binary and some of them have uh, more than two categories and these are all numeric type of variables all right so we have a formula that we are going to use i uh, remember in the previous um, lab we have talked about only keeping bmi and not keeping any of the other variables that are highly collinear with bmi all right so this is the formula that we are going to use uh, similar to before we are using the linear regression to fit the model all right so for this model see there are in total um, 33 variables and among these 33 variables we are using a number of these variables in this formula um, some of those variables were um, let's look at this some of those variables were binary variables some of those variables were uh, continuous variables. some of the va variables were um, binary and so these variables say for example are categorical variable right so when we are estimating regression coefficient we are getting a regression coefficient for all of the categories except for one which is known as the reference category right Right, so let's take a look at the data so when we do the model matrix of the fitted model we can see intercept is all one gender uh, only for uh, male you can see the row there is uh, no other row sorry column for uh, female you can see one um, column for age and one column for born uh, whether in us or other and then three columns for race there were four different categories of race and um, in all of these these are basically dummy variable so one if this is yes zero if uh, this condition does not meet and in here uh, zero if this condition does not mean one here uh, if this condition meet and zero elsewhere right so this is the way we create the model matrix and see in total we have 29 uh, dimensions in this model matrix that does not mean we have 29 variables that is not what it is meaning what it is meaning is that it has 29 dummy variables and among those dummy variables some of those dummy variables might contain the information from one variable right so in here our dummy variable uh, we have 29 dummy variables including the intercept remember at the beginning there was the intercept term as well all right so we want to check the prediction we want to know how good is the prediction when we are building the model uh, and say for example in this particular case the model building was from a prediction perspective then let us find out which was the um, outcome variable our outcome variable was cholesterol and um, we had a number of covariates. so cholesterol was our outcome right okay so let us isolate this uh, cholesterol variable and we let let us call it observation y and we when we make a summary of it we see um, this cholesterol can vary between 89 to 362 now we have fitted um, a model above based on the linear model that we have um, used based on the formula for, uh, we have assigned right so based on this formula these are all predictors now there is no primary predictors all of them are predictors uh, from here to here all of them are predictors and we are simply trying to see uh, what is the predicted value out of that model so we use the predict function to get the predictions and we get a summary of them to get the predictions. see 
um, the minimum value is much higher than the observed value and the maximum value is relatively close in terms of the mean value mean values are relatively close median values are also relatively close right all right so we want to find out how much data we have used we used uh, about 26 um, hundred data and that is because um, this fit for was fitted using um, analytic 3 and when we used analytic 3 we were using 26 um, 132 variables so we also had 20 uh, 632 variables from the design matrix so this is our um, sample size for the analytic tree all right so in here we simply plot and we try to plot the lowest um, which is basically a smooth version of the plot and so that we can get a uh, line and the smooth line looks very similar to a uh, linear uh, format so there is some curvature here but not too much all right so in terms of um predicting in a separate data we have a fictitious data that is a separate data with all of the same variables but the observations were extracted from a different cycle of enhance so in this fictitious data we have more than four four thousand observations and we we have um this predicted value based on our model fit on this fictitious data so you see the predicted values in this spread y new are slightly different now it is minimum is 128 and maximum is more than 500 so basically what 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 is the purpose of fitting our model in all of the different data set which is external to our data set right this fictitious data set is not the data set where we fit our data we fit our data in analytic 3 right all right so in terms of measuring the prediction error or measuring how good your prediction is especially when we are dealing with continuous outcome the cholesterol is continuous variable in our case um, the first thing that we can use is r square remember the r square that you have learned in uh, um, spph 400 or any basic stat course where you you calculate a mean and then you subtract all of your observation from mean and uh, you square this difference and sum them up this is the sum of square of total and if you have y as your original um, observation and f as your predicted value then this sum of square is basically your um, regression residual sum of square and to calculate your r square what you need to do is basically one minus um, regression sum of square divided by total sum of square right so all right so based on this formula it is easy to calculate this um, residual r square how, how do i do it i have this observed y i have this predicted y that i have obtained um, using the pred functions uh, before right and this predicted y let me just show you quickly what is this predicted y um, so this predicted y was on the original data um, this was the analytic 3 data where we fitted our fit for model and from that original data we simply predicted based on the same model and we got these predictions all right so if we do that then we get the sum of square uh, of residual residual and we we calculate a residual from there 
Similarly, using the formula of mean and sum of square total, we can also calculate the mean and we can calculate the sum of square of total of the difference between the observations and the mean. So observations and the mean and do the sum of square and we get a sum of square of total. So basically our function says that r square is 1 minus sum of square of residual divided by sum of square of total and we can calculate the r square equal to 0 0.24 remember the range of r square the range of r square is uh, from 0 to 1 so 24 percent predictive ability um, of all of the predictors that were included in the model not very high so you can get without calculating all of these uh, manually you can use the r square function from caret package and you would get the same estimate all right remember the n over tables that you have um, calculated in your uh, basic stat courses and in that basic stat courses you would um, calculate the mean sum square of error um, or root mean sum square of error how do you calculate that sum square of error divided by the error degrees of freedom how do you calculate the error degrees of freedom so in the n over table you you have the formula for um, the degrees of freedom so in our case uh, this i is basically n and this j is basically p so what we are doing is we have already calculated the sse in here and now we are just dividing by the degrees of freedom and uh, taking a square root and that is giving us the uh, root mean sum of square and you can simply use the rmsc function from the caret package um, to get the same result same goes for the adjusted r square you can simply use the formula for the adjusted r square and can calculate the adjusted r square now because we will be using these r square adjusted r square and root mean square errors um, many many times so we we do not want to calculate all of these again and again separately what we want to do is we want to write a function that will do all of our, the prediction error calculation at the same time so in order to do that let us recap how to write a function in r this was already covered in lab one but let me just rephrase so you have a function command you have a argument and you have a function name and then you have the output returned by the return command and all of the statement goes in between these uh, curly brackets uh, but before this return command all right let me give you a very simple example so what I want to do is I simply want to give two values a and b and I want this function to calculate the sum of these two values right so this is the statement and this is the function these are the arguments a and b this is the function name and this is the return so once I define the function f1 I can simply write down f1 a1 a equal to 1 and b equal to 3 and that will give me a sum similarly if i write um, a equal to 1 b equals 6 it will give me 7 and it is also possible to set default value say for example if in the argument uh, when you are defining the arguments if you give them a specific value it, the function will remember that so later when you call the function you do not have to give any names here so sometimes what happens is that say for example if you have 10 20 arguments you do not have want to um, give 10 20 values every time you run it you probably want to have default values for most of them and want to set one or two values for some of them and that will give you um, um, the benefit of not uh, inserting all of the values all the time so if there is some default values that are popularly used try to use those default values when you are defining the arguments in a function so say for example in here one and one it will automatically give you two if you say b equal to 10 you do not have to define a because it will remember a equals to one and that will give you a result all right
let me go to a function that is a bit more complicated so we have a formula and then based on that formula i want to run a linear regression and at the end of it i want to extract the coefficient and i want the function to return the results or the coefficients from that model the only thing i want to supply is the data for fitting or the data that will be fit, uh, where the regression will be fitted i just want to give the function the data and see when i am just giving the analytic data it is giving me the coefficients back right and when i am giving a different data analytic 3 it is also giving me the coefficients back so you can uh, complexify this argument or function as well by adding the argument of digits because say for example if you do not like all of these digits you want just two digits you can simply assign digit equal to two and then um, you can set uh, before the result is printed you can specify how many digits you want and then when you uh, use this function uh, see you are not mentioning how many digits because the default value of digit is already mentioned there and then you have all of these um, coefficients with the specified digits that was defined in default and you can also do it uh, in a separate data set and it will operate in the same way now coming back to the performance measures so now I want to give the new data. I want to give the name of the model fit and I want to give the name of the outcome variable that I have and I also want to give some digits, how many digits I want to see uh, when I'm printing the output, right? So in here you can see all of the things that I'm doing uh, are the statements um, that resides in a function. These are the arguments and I want to write all of my statements between these curly brackets, uh, of course, before the return, right? So in here, what I'm doing, I'm defining my P or the number of data dimensions from my model matrix. I'm getting my predicted value. Um, then I'm getting the sample size and I'm getting the outcome variable and I'm calculating the R square based on the caret package. I am also using a slightly different formula to calculate the adjusted R square and also I'm using the caret package to get the RMSC. And then what I'm doing is I am combining all of these results as a vector um, and I am I'm using C bind so um, it, it is returning a uh, one row matrix. Um, so this is what what i'm getting as a result when i'm specifying what is my new data analytic 3 data what is the outcome and what is the model fit right so this is how i am uh, getting all of these um, r square adjusted r square and rmsc all together all right now why i'm doing this because i am simply going to use this perform function over and over again in this lab and so I just defined the function so that I do not have to um, calculate all of these estimates over and over again. All right. So before I go any further with the lab, um, I will explain um, what I mean by data splitting in the class as well, but in general, say for example uh, when i am working on a data set and i am trying to calculate the r square or adjusted r square or rmsc from the same data on which the model was fitted often what happens is that the results are overestimated in the sense that um, the r square values will be very high but if you as soon as you fit this in a different data then you will see the results are not that uh, nice anymore to explain the idea let me just um, use the data splitting idea to first split the data so in here uh, this is a function from the caret package what I'm basically doing is I am trying to split the entire data into two parts one would be my training data and one would be my test data 
so I want the training data to be 70% that's why I'm saying p equals 0.7 and the 30% of the data will be test data right and um, what this will do this will simply create some index and once the index is created um, then I am uh, I can simply check uh, how how many index are created um, it is saying that um, in the training data I have 1844 data points uh, remember in our original data we had more than 2600 uh, data set so if you simply uh, multiply the dimension of analytic 3 data by 70% you can see the um, approximate training data size becomes eight, uh, 1842 which is very close to 1844 since there are some fraction involved so R is making the decision of making the uh, test uh, training data set size uh, a, in a round number so that you are not splitting one sample into training and test all right so the 30 percent of the data uh, that means 1 minus 0 0.7 is coming from here so how much data is that so from the original data we know that um, this should be very close to 789 um, so you can simply calculate if this is the training data how much is the test data um, based on uh, simple calculation all right so now that we have 1844 data in the training set we can simply assign um, a training data based on the index that we have created out of this um, create data partition function so this will give you 1844 data points in total the training data will have 1844 data points of course we want to create the test data um, and that is created by minus split and you will see 788 data points originally we calculated it will be close to 789 so it is uh, after some rounding of uh, we are getting it 788 so we have two portion of the data now one is the training data one is the test data now in the training data what i want to do i want to fit this formula for this model that we have uh, built before and in the training data i get this summary um, and then i try to extract the performance measure so from this uh, training data i want to extract the performance and the performance says that my r square let's just focus on r square now the r square is 0 0.43 all right so this is in the training data now let us think about the test data remember the original model was fitted in the training data and now we want to um, check the that model's performance in the test data right so when we do that, when we check our uh, model performance on the test data, we can see R square is 0 0.23, which is lower than 0 0.43. So in the original data where the model was fitted, and then we are trying to predict, we can see a higher R square, we can see a lower R square when we are using a test data. Test data means what? Same data, but a different split. Right? but we are seeing a very different not very different somewhat different r square so when we try to use the entire data what do you expect the r square would be somewhere in between right because it it all contains training data also test data so we are we are seeing something like that we are seeing r square is be between this and this right and if we use a fictitious data the other cycle data we can see the the r square is still not as high as it was in the original data so and and remember this fictitious data was uh, much higher probably almost double than the uh, original analytic 3 data so even if the sample size was higher uh, it didn't really matter much because the original data had the best r square and that is what we 
call as optimism because uh, we are seeing something uh, optimistic in the original data where the model was fitted but as soon as we are changing the data keeping the model same we are seeing some decrease in the r square and same thing is happening to all of the other measures adjusted r square rmsc everywhere we can see uh, so in here you can see uh, the RMSC was the lowest and the lowest RMSC is the best RMSC, right? And then you can see once you uh, are using the test data, you are seeing more error. And um, you see 34 is the lowest here. No one else can beat this. So this is uh, the optimistic result compared to all other. Uh, since R square is measured by the highest, uh, you can see this is the best R square and RMSC is measured by the lowest. So this is the best RMSC as well. All right. So how do we deal with this optimism? Because obviously if we um, are using prediction, basically we are trying to build a model that will work on future data. But obviously what we can see here is that in the future data, the model is giving us worst, worst performance, right? So what can we do about that? So there is a algorithm that is developed to figure out what would be the best way to get these performance measures. And the, and the suggestion is we hold out some samples. That means we keep our test sample aside and we only work with the training set to build a model. But when we try to measure the data, we try to measure using the test data. And that will give us some measure that will help us uh, not getting this kind of optimistic results. So um, overfitting is really a big issue whenever we are dealing with predictive models and this, um, this algorithm of um, using the test data and training data uh, is helping us getting a more realistic uh, measure of performance, right? So split sample is a very crude type of um, estimate and as you can imagine if you have a small data set often what happens is that if you split the data into training set and test set then what happens is that the model is uh, probably not stable anymore so in that case um, whether you have smaller sample size or larger sample size often k for cross validation is um, suggested as a way to test this kind of optimi this kind of um, performance measure in a realistic way. So the way this K for cross validation works is that say for example you are splitting your data set into five parts, right? So you split the data into five parts, but you keep um, one of those five parts as your test data and you keep four of those parts as your training data, right? And then in the second iteration, what you do is you, you, you have a different test data and rest of them as training data. And then in the third iteration, what you have is you have a different test data and rest of them are training data and so on. To give you a more clear um, idea let me work with this example where I have k equals 5 so I want k for cross validation that means I want 5 for cross validation and in here our original sample size was more than 2600 and I want to create the folds but now I want 5 fold cross validation uh, so I said k equal to k where I already defined k equals 5 and then try to see um, how how much is uh, four fifth of the data set because four fifth of the data set is our training data now, right? Uh, so four fifth of the data set is twenty one hundred, 
and one fifth of the data set is 500 so this would be 500 and this this would be 2100 in total this would be 2600 right so and and similarly you can check um, when you build these folds using this create folds function in the caret uh, you can see in each of these folds you have approximately 2100 observations um, in all of these five folds so not all of the folds will have exactly the same number of observations all right so in the first fold so similar to before so in the first fold um, these are the training sample index and based on them i am creating the training sample ids and based on those ids i am splitting the data into the training data and in the fold one the test data will be whatever is remaining so this will be approximately 2100 observation and this will be approximately 500 observations in 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 the test so in the training data now i try to feed the model and then i try to uh, measure the performance in the test data and in the test data i can see the r square is 0.23 right so i'm only operating on the first fold which one this iteration right so in this iteration i simply used my training data to build my model and then used my test data to extract the measure of performance like r square now this is only the first fold now i move on to the second fold and in the second fold i will do the same in the second fold i will create the ids according to the fold that was created using the create fold function and then i will create the uh, training and test data and i will use the training and test data to calculate my r square see the r square in the first fold and r square in the second fold are different right so similarly you, you can imagine since i have total five folds i can simply calculate five different r squares right but as you can imagine and understand this is a quite complex process and we are doing the same thing over and over again fortunately there is a function in um, caret package known as the train function where you can simply um, use the uh, training control operator or argument where you can specify which method you want to use you want to use the cross validation method and you want to use k equal to 5 so you just specify number equal to 5 if you do that you will see it will give you a fit right and it, it will give you some r msc r square and some other uh, performance measure so what are these rmsc and r square basically what this train function is doing uh, when we specify our train control method equal to cv and number equal to 5 is that it will calculate the rmsc from all of the test samples right it will use the training sample to fit the model and develop the model and it will use the test sample to get all of these rmscs right and when you take a mean of these r squares all of these r squares that you calculate when you take a mean of this r square you get a r square of 0 0.21 right see the r square reported in the fit for cv out of the train function is 0 0.21 that means this is basically a mean of these r square values all right so what are you getting here then so you you have decided a five fold cross validation so you should have five different r squares um, and all of these are trained that means this model is trained on the training data 
but all of these r squares are coming from the test data and when you are reporting the r square from the fit 4.cv you are getting a mean of these r squares from the uh, test data sets and simply not only the mean you can also calculate the standard uh, standard deviation of these r squares to see how different the values are from each other the values can vary say for example remember in our when we were doing our uh, fold one and fold two calculations we were getting different r squares so you can see um, the r squares are different in five of these folds as well and these r squares do not match with the fold calculation that we have done above because the cross validation um, index uh, when we created the folds, they were not exactly the same. That's why our fold one calculation and this uh, R square from the first uh, fold one resample is not going to be exactly the same. In fact, if you um, if you use a different seed, so C set seed is a function that controls the randomness. Uh, so which random number will be generated, right? If you change this seed and run this model again you will see even these r square uh, values will be slightly different 